Hey everyone, welcome back to Reading with Tatiana. Today I'm reviewing Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. And recently I had read his other book, Clara and the Sun, which I gave it a 4 out of 5, and it was my first Kazuo Ishiguro book, and I loved it. But I think because I read this book, uh, like literally right after, and I had high expectations, I unfortunately gave this book, Never Let Me Go, a 2 out of 5. Today, my booktuber shout goes out to Reader in the Reverie. I came across the channel because she posted a complete guide to all of Kazuo Ishiguro's works, and she goes into quite detail about each book and the summary of them and her thoughts, and I really enjoyed her video. It is a bit of a longer video, but I think if you're a fan of his works, please check it out, and as always, I'll link her channel down below. And as always, before I go into my full book review, I'll always appreciate it if you like my content, so please hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have read this book, Never Let Me Go, or read of any other uh, Ishiguro's works, please comment down below. Never Let Me Go was published in 2005, and the genre that it falls into is sci-fi. However, as I get more into the review, there's actually a bit of like, uh, I guess conflict amongst readers if it's really truly sci-fi, but it's definitely like a dystopian, uh, I guess, dystopian reality. A bit about the author, Kusio Ishiguro. If you saw my review for Claire and the Sun, you probably already heard a lot of this. So he is a British novelist. He was born in Japan, but his family moved very quickly uh, to UK when he was five years old. And he has written lots and lots of works. He was published as early as the 1980s. And because of all his literary, work, literary works, he has won a Nobel Prize for literature. His novels are kind of known to be very dreamlike. Uh, it's always first person and reliable narrative, which I always really enjoy. Um, he always uses memory as kind of a guideline because memory is frail and unreliable. So it's a good way to kind of uh, make uh, find truth of the actual reality of the world he built in his books. Um, two of his books have been made into movie adaptation. One of them was called The Remains of the Day with the movie in the same name. And this book, Never Let Me Go, is also a movie adaptation. So this book was published in 2005 and then the movie adaptation came out in 2010. I actually don't think I watched the movie when it came out, which I'm kind of surprised by because the cast was Keira Knightley, who was just a really hot uh, actress back then and also Andrew Garfield before he got really big and yeah so I'm definitely gonna watch this movie probably later this week and post a review of the book to movie adaptation. A bit about the story so I'm not gonna go get too much into it because I think it's very quickly and easy to spoil this so if you're curious if this review will have any spoilers there will be minimal to no spoilers in regards to the premise. So basically the story is told from first person from Kathy and she's talking about present day, but she kind of goes back into her memory of a time when her and her friends were in a boarding school. So it's not very clear what this world is. It is set in the 1990s in the UK, and this book is written in 2005. So it's kind of like a dystopian past, dystopian past, I guess, but dystopian present, instead of a dystopian future. So Kathy is a carer, a carer and she's been here for 12 years. And we come to learn in this book that people are split into being carers or donors. And Kathy starts reliving her past when she was in a boarding school called Hailsham and eventually later the cottage. And she kind of goes through like her friendship with Ruth and Tommy and her kind of this trio that like, you know, got together and they kind of grew up and it's kind of like a coming of age story. And pretty quickly you'll learn that this boarding school, there's something different. Um, there is things that maybe aren't normal in our reality. So because Kathy is going back and recounting these memories, she's kind of unreliable because it's only from her perspective. And really she can't speak for her friends, Ruth or Tommy. So this book is really interesting because it's kind of like a mystery and it's like kind of like a going back in your memory kind of mystery. Um, but I'll get more into why I didn't enjoy this book, unfortunately. So common themes in this book that I noticed is definitely the uh, the time and time again question of what is life's purpose? Like what is the point to live? Do we need a purpose? And what are we living, to, uh, living towards? So it's interesting to see how the three different characters, Tommy, Ruth, and Kathy, deal with this question. Um, and also like the question of fate. Do you believe in fate? Is everything, um, it, do you have free will? And if you do or do not, even if you know what the fate is, do you give in or do you try to control it? 
be, so it's very interesting too. It's very like um, ask a lot of like, philosophy questions I really enjoy. Um, also with the three of them, Tommy, Ruth, and Kathy, there's a lot of, since they're in boarding school and quite young, and I think, you know, if you went, if, if when you, not if you went to school, you probably went to school. Uh, when you were growing up in school, like I feel like when you're young and kids and teenagers are trying to figure out uh, how to socialize, they're always are, you know, those kids who kind of tell like white lies. It's kind of like this theme of like, do you call people out or you just kind of let it slide? But if you let it slide, like how much sliding is too much before this person is kind of like a pathological liar. So it's very interesting. And to add to that, it kind of talks about like friendship and loyalty between Tommy, Ruth, and Kathy. And as they grow up through school, Hale, Sham, and Cottage, how they grow to support each other or eventually they fade away. And when they reconnect in their adulthood, do they do they owe it to each other to support each other? So I think these are all really great questions. And now that I'm thinking about all these common themes that this book made me think about, maybe I should give it a higher rating. Cause like, I'll tell you what I didn't like about this book uh, in the next section. But now I think about the common themes, maybe I want to give this book a higher rating. It's just, it's just the things I didn't like that really threw me off. So now I'll get into two things I didn't like about this book that gave me, that made me give it ultimately two was the prose. Um, I loved Ishiguro's writing style in Claire and the Sun, but in this book, like, it was really hard. So basically it's told in Kathy, uh, protagonist, first person. And she, like I said, she's in present day and she's going back to share her memories of the time at Hailsham and the college. With Ruth, and Tom, with Ruth and Tommy. And when she's sharing these stories, she'll be like, oh, and so uh, I'm recounting this memory. Oh, but wait, before I get there, I have to tell you something else. And then she'll go that there and tell you the something else. But when she starts telling you the something else, she'll be like, oh, wait, but for you to understand that, we have to go further back or go to this other time. So like, it was really hard to follow her thought process, which I understand is maybe the intention of Ishu Guru's writing. But I just hated it. Like, I really struggled to finish this book. And I think if I did it not have a personal goal of never do not finish a book, I would not have finished this book. Uh, it dragged for me. Like, this book, the length of it, it's, like, just under 300 pages, I think. This would, if it was a good book, I would easily finish it in two or three days. But this took me over a week because I was just dreading reading it. So the prose for me was a big thing I did not enjoy about this book. Um, other thing I didn't enjoy, which now I realize... Uh, were two other books I didn't like in 2022, which was We Were Liars and The Vines, which I also gave, I think, a one or two for both those books, is I don't really like the common trope of boarding schools or this coming of age where people are in this kind of exclusive community. Um, I mean, that's only three books that just happen to have this that I don't like, but I'm kind of picking up on this theme that maybe there's something I will avoid in the future just because there's this exclusivity, this, um, this like, clique, this me versus them and I just don't really enjoy that mentality at all. So those are two big things I did not enjoy about this book. But of course there are things I like. So as you guys know if you watch my channel I love the trope of unreli unreliable narrators. Um, however I don't think it was done well in this case but you know it's still something I enjoy and you know to call back to the common themes now that I started talking about this book I do like all the questions of life and being human that this book brings up and it's kind of nice because it brings it up subconsciously. It's not in your face when you read it, but after I'm done reading it, it's kind of like a slow burn, which I will also describe this book as a slow burn. On Goodreads, the average rating for this book is 3.84 out of 5. Uh, I think that's very accurate. People either love this book or hating it. There was no really in between. So there's a lot of like one or two stars or five or four stars. So a lot of people that didn't like it was similar to me was they thought it was a slow burn and when the twist was revealed it was kind of like a matter of fact versus like a big reveal and then also people thought there's lots of false alarms for plot buildup but ultimately there was not really a lot of plot so people thought that was very frustrating which I definitely agree with. Uh, reasons why people love this book was they love the themes of love, sex, and illness all intertwined, what it means to be human. People love the perspective that they, that Ishiguro wrote from Kathy, how she was just an observer and not necessarily reacting to her, to her situations, even though it was horrible. So um, yeah, those were reviews that I saw in Goodreads, and I think they're all accurate for why people like them and didn't like it. I think you should read this book if you're a fan of dystopian and a other way of looking of looking at how society can work and form. And like honestly, I guess the question of like what it means to be human and what it means to be a moral human.
Now I'll share how this book made me feel because if you ask me a week, a year, five years from now, I probably won't remember exactly what this book was about, but I'll also remember how it made me feel. So this book, Casillo Ishiguru, Never Let Me Go, it made me feel very curious about having more discussions of what it means for me to be human, what it means for society to be human, and how it can be more moral. And is it our responsibility to be moral and just? for the greater good? I don't know. It's very interesting. So yes, this book, I don't know, maybe not after I film a review, maybe I'll bump it to a three. Thank you for watching until the end of my book review for Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. If you read this book, I'd love to hear what you thought down below. And if you want to join me next time, I'm reading my possibly uh, last ever Colleen Hoover book, all Your Perfects, recommended by Eliza's Bookshelf. I've been burned twice now reading Colleen Hoover books. I read Verity and I think Reminders of Him, and I just didn't like the toxic romance in either of those books. But then Eliza said that this book is actually really good. And I did start it last night and I actually am enjoying it a lot more than Verity and Reminders of Him. So we will see. Thanks for watching until the end of my videos and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!